Hi everyone, welcome to the Marine Science, Safety, and Environmental Protection Department's presentation for the Massachusetts Maritime Academy Open House. My name is Dr. Kristen Osborne. I'm an assistant professor in the MSSEP department, and I also serve as the department liaison with the admissions department here at MMA. This presentation is going to consist of three parts. In the first part, I'm going to give you an introduction to the major. We're going to talk about the learning outcomes the curriculum, electives, minors, and concentrations, and I'm gonna talk a bit about our freshman experiential learning trip. In part two, you're going to have the opportunity to meet our rates for this year. And in part three, we're going to give you a brief tour of our aquaculture and marine sciences lab, also known as the AMS lab, and also of the research vessel. Today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about our department and what you can expect if you were to pursue a Bachelor's of Science degree in Marine Science Safety and Environmental Protection, which is also the name of our department. So these are our learning outcomes that we expect students to achieve by the time they have completed the curriculum in our department and earn their bachelor's degree. So just to quickly highlight some of these things, we want you to understand the principal ecological, geological, and chemical characteristics of marine and coastal environments. We want you to understand the current environmental problems that we face today as a human population on the planet and how to effectively manage resources, coastal zones, hazardous materials management that may influence or attribute to those current environmental problems. We expect our students to be able to utilize GIS or geographic information systems for scientific planning and management applications. So GIS is a mapping software and this allows you to make highly quantitative data sets visually accessible to people. For example, utilizing census data to indicate population density in a particular voting precinct. Master practices in marine and industrial safety. We also want you to have good written and oral communication skills within the marine science, environmental, and safety fields, although these are imperative no matter what field you decide to enter. Using the scientific method to construct and execute research projects in aquatic and coastal environments. We at Mass Maritime pride ourselves on the learn do learn approach and we certainly live up to that standard in the MSSEP department, getting the boots of our students dirty as often as possible to facilitate that type of hands-on learning. We want you to gain exposure to career paths related to the MSSEP major by actively participating in relative cooperative experiences. And our students are going to tell you a whole lot more about that later on. I would like to take the opportunity to highlight some important points about our curriculum for the MSSEP major. Notice that there are general education, science, and mathematics requirements all listed here. However, no matter what major you choose at Mass Maritime, you will be required to take these courses, but they do differ depending on which major you choose. So for example, our students in MSSEP take courses such as organic and hazmat chemistry, applied environmental mathematics, or even environmental chemistry. We also focus on including management and communication courses. So for example, you see the introduction to communication, risk communication courses that are taken in semesters three and eight respectively. We have management courses such as hazardous materials management in semester six, and you can see a sprinkling of other course offerings, including those like environmental law, coastal ecology, physical geology, and coastal zone management. I'd like to take the opportunity to build upon the information from the last slide about the curriculum and talk a little bit about our electives and some of the minors and concentrations that we offer in our department. The first, for marine biology, we actually offer a minor, which you need to take six courses out of those that are listed here. And we also have a concentration when you take four of the courses that are listed here. The difference essentially outside of taking two additional courses is that the minor actually shows up on your transcript and the concentration does not. So I highly recommend students do the minor, especially because you are able to utilize, if we flip back, 
all of the department electives, all four of them here, and the free electives to satisfy that minor without having to take any additional courses at this time. We also offer an occupational health and safety minor, also six courses, and you can see the courses are listed here. We also offer a shipboard environmental and safety officer concentration. There are three courses that are required, four practicums and half of a C term. And sometimes students don't necessarily want to pursue a minor or a concentration, and that's absolutely fine. If you want a little bit of everything, you want to experience a little bit more variety, here's an example of how you could fulfill your four MSSEP department electives. You could take conservation biology, ecological sustainability, municipal wastewater treatment, and marine mammals. So you're getting a good spread and variety that we have to offer within our department. We often get a lot of questions about the freshman experiential learning trip for MSSEP. Uh, once upon a time, I was a cadet at Mass Maritime myself, and at that time, all freshmen, regardless of major, went on C term. We have now changed our approach, and we bring our students to the Bermuda Institute of Sciences, or BIOS, for a 12-day immersive field course in the winter term. And you can see in the image here, the campus is absolutely beautiful, lots of students out on the pier there, and the in the same photo, you can see their research vessel, which we often are able to get a tour of. For 2021, the faculty who will be teaching the course, including myself and also Dr. Heather Burton, both of us have been teaching the BIOS experiential learning since we started. This will be our fourth year going to BIOS. We have senior rates who are selected for every year. These are the senior students who are going to be accompanying us on the trip. So we have John Kerry, Sydney Clays, Heather Gaughan, and Samuel Jackson. In addition to the faculty and senior rates, we also utilize the bio staff, scientists, and guest speakers for their incredible knowledge about all of the components of the field course I'm going to talk about now. The components are listed here. You can see that we cover lots of different aspects in this 12 days, so it's a very busy 12 days. We cover subtropical ecology because technically, believe it or not, Bermuda is subtropical, not quite tropical. We cover the fisheries of Bermuda, the geology, Bermuda's human history, we include important aspects like personal development and reflection, along with collaboration and responsibility as well. So giving back to the facilities and the island itself. Okay, so I'm first going to cover subtropical ecology, and here we're talking about marine ecosystems. And right away, you can see that we spend a lot of time in the water with our students. We go to many different sites, including the coastal sites and offshore sites. We visit a shipwreck at Nonsuch Island, which is a protected island with the sole purpose of preserving the native biodiversity of Bermuda. You can see that we encounter lots of sea life and our students are truly immersed, quite literally, in the environment doing science and research. Additionally, for subtropical ecology, we do a plankton tow and analysis, so students go out, and we have been lucky enough the last couple of years to go out in the evening to observe the bioluminescence, which is wonderful. But um, take these plankton toes that you can see depicted in the bottom right, and we're looking at all of the critters under the microscope that we can't otherwise see. And we discuss the importance of these critters and how they essentially provide that backbone to these ecosystems. As I mentioned previously, we also cover fisheries and we take a trip to the Bermuda Aquarium Museum and Zoo, also known as BAMS, where students have an assignment. They often work together to complete this assignment. Additionally, we complement that trip and that assignment with two lectures. Dr. Burton typically gives the Bermuda Fisheries Lecture, and we utilize the expertise of Dr. Tim Noyce, who works at BIOS, 
and his expertise specifically focuses on mapping fish populations and identifying indicators of reef health. One of the major concerns in Bermuda is the invasive lionfish, which you see over there to the right. So understanding the impacts of that fish on the fisheries of Bermuda is an essential piece of the puzzle. We also focus on terrestrial ecosystems and the geology of the island. So we take botany and coastal geology tours. We explore caves at Walsingham Reserve. And we also do a beach dune hike and plant identification during that time. So you can see here a list of field sites that we have explored in the past. And in the upper right, a bio staff member who's an expert on all of the flora of the island is leading a discussion on the plants that we have found and identified on the dunes. Another important course component is understanding Bermuda's history with a focus on human history here. We take our students to the National Museum of Bermuda at Darkyard, and we also visit Fort St. Catherine. There the students will complete a treasure hunt type assignment. And in the evening, they have a lecture with a local historian to give them another perspective on this immersion into the island of Bermuda. An important piece of the experiential learning course is having students conduct personal development and reflection by the use of daily journals. So you can see some examples of what those prompts look like. And the idea is that they're reflecting on the activities for the day and how they relate to the major, but also thinking about how they're feeling on those particular days. And for some students, they've never left home before, they've never flown on a plane. So this trip is a big deal. And we like to see students thinking about not only the academic pieces, but also how they're feeling in this moment in an experience they may have never had before. The final component of the MSSEP experiential learning course is the collaboration responsibility piece. So collaboration comes in the form of students working in groups to complete their major assignment, which is a field guide. And the responsibility piece comes from giving back to the island. And you can see our students are participating in removing invasive species and planting native and endemic species in their place to try to facilitate that regrowth and conserve the species, which in the case of endemics are only found on the island of Bermuda worldwide. So, what you can expect from your freshman fall semester if you join us in MSSEP in preparation for experiential learning are several meetings with myself, Dr. Burton, and our rates, snorkel gear fitting from a professional dive shop, as well as professional snorkeling training from an instructor from that dive shop in our pool. You'll also be given the curriculum and assignment packet. So how can you prepare for the fall semester leading into our trip to Bermuda? Make sure you get in the water, you feel comfortable swimming, get a passport, and make sure you visit our website if you want to learn more about the specifics. For example, the packing list, what that looks like, the travel information, and any other sorts of pertinent information relative to that particular year. If you still have any questions about MSSEP, I'm more than happy to help you. Again, my name is Dr. Kristen Osborne. I am the admissions liaison for our department. You can reach me by phone at the number listed, or you can email me, which is preferable in the time of COVID. And now I would like to give you an opportunity to hear from our senior rates. Hello everyone. I hope you are all healthy and doing well wherever it is you're tuning in from. My name is Cadet First Class John Carey, Environmental Operations Officer as well as 2nd Battalion Adjutant for the 2020-2021 academic year. My team and I hope this open house format is as helpful and informative as possible for each one of you and we look forward to answering any of your questions which may arise in the following time frame. To begin, 
I would like to speak about my experiences from my completed cooperative educations or co-ops thus far. Currently, I have completed two co-ops, one this past winter and another this past summer. My winter co-op experience took place at the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation's main office in downtown Boston. This experience afforded me so many wonderful opportunities to network with industry professionals as well as chances to broaden my knowledge base by picking the brain of an MMA graduate program alumnus, who I was lucky enough to have as my boss. Speaking of my boss, I worked as an emergency response assistant under the supervision of the Massachusetts DCR's Emergency Preparedness and Response Coordinator. In this position, I held three main roles, the first being to assist my boss with any and all of his projects in the office. This included updating DCR contact lists, bringing standard operations procedures up to date, and working with another agency to create a contingency of operations protocol for their staff. The second main role was to attend meetings with or on the behalf of my boss. Some of the meetings we attended consisted of weekly conference calls with the DCR's regional directors, as well as weather calls with DCR field personnel. Other meetings we attended in person were monthly emergency management team meetings and a North Station Security Network briefing. The third role assigned to me was to assume the duties of dispatcher at the DCR Winter Storm Center during the win winter weather events. Each of these roles afforded me unique experiences while being able to work alongside so many incredible people. Moving along, my next co-op experience took place at my hometown's recycling department this past summer. This was a really great experience because I was able to work outside in a more physical and hands-on manner while being afforded the opportunity to work closely with Covanta Waste Management, a major waste management company, as well as partner of our recycling center. Throughout my time at the recycling department, I worked as a recycling center attendant who would ensure that residents entering the facility were following proper procedures for waste disposal. I met so many great residents, many of whom would make a trip to the center almost daily, which allowed me to get to know a lot of them on a more personal level. This afforded me the fantastic opportunity to network with professionals from around my hometown and build a rapport with them. All of this obviously took place during the global health crisis we are still in the midst of, so that created many unique issues we had to navigate and solve on a week-to-week -week basis. But all in all, we functioned as a successful team who got the job done. The next point I would like to speak about will be with regards to my future plans following graduation. The MSSEP major encompasses so much within a specialized curriculum. The possibilities for a graduate are truly endless if you are willing to put in the time to master your chosen craft. As you hear from each of my fellow rates, possibilities for future MSSE peers are bright. MSSEP cadets are typically the students who never back down from a challenge and work tirelessly at whatever they choose to do with the desire for a better tomorrow. Personally, my future plans are not yet set in stone. I thoroughly enjoyed my time at both of my co-ops and will be continuing to seek opportunities with those agencies moving forward. A career goal I have held for a long time has been to work for an environmental police department somewhere in the Northeast. This is something I am also still seeking opportunities to pursue. I, along with my classmates, want to accomplish so much and having an MSSEP background from MMA serves as a solid foundation to build a future to be proud of. Please bring questions to the Q&A portion of this presentation and feel free to reach out in the future. My team and I are here to help. Hello and welcome. My name is First Class Cadet Sydney Clays. I am a senior at Massachusetts Maritime Academy. My major is Marine Safety Science and Environmental Protection. I also have a three bar rate position with the MSSEP department. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. I grew up in westerly Rhode Island, so I grew up in the ocean state and I have a very uh, deep love and appreciation for the ocean. So when it came time to go to college, I really wanted to com combine that love for the ocean with my education, and that is why I ended up at Massachusetts Maritime Academy. Um, so today we are also be talking about uh, co-op opportunities and future career opportunities. So with my four years at Mass Maritime, I had the opportunity to do two co-ops, one three-credit co-op and one six-credit co-op. 
For my three credit co-op, I had the amazing opportunity to go down and study in South Africa for a month. So I flew out of Providence um, all the way down to Johannesburg, South Africa, and I ended up staying in Mossel Bay for about a month. Uh, and that's where I was able to study great white sharks as well as other smaller benthic sharks, such as the pajama shark, the leopard shark, and sand tiger shark. Um, I also studied a few species of skate and rays down there. Uh, it was an amazing opportunity. I got to work with uh, world-renowned scientists on shark research, including Dr. Enrico Ganeri, who you might have seen on Shark Week. Um, but we also did cetacean studies, so marine mammal studies. Um, actually, while it was down there, there was a pygmy sperm whale uh, who was pregnant and she ended up beaching herself and sadly passing away. But we had the opportunity to do a full body necropsy on her, which um, I will never forget. If you've ever been in on the inside of a whale, it's very interesting. Um, and yeah, so that was an, a, a, extremely life-changing uh, opportunity. My six credit co-op, I really got to dive into what I wanted to do in my career um, in the future. So I was able to work with a nonprofit organization called New England Science and Sailing. Uh, they are located in Stonington, Connecticut. Um, and that's where I was able to teach children for the entire summer about marine science, um, conservation, why it's important to, to conserve marshland, why piping plovers are important. So I got to do what I really wanted to do, which was combining education and marine science, and it was awesome. I absolutely loved it. Um, regarding future career opportunities, they actually offered me a full-time position at NESS as a marine science educator. So come the spring, I hope to take that up and be able to um, have a full-time job as a marine science educator, uh, educating any, uh, anyone from the age of five all the way to 17. So it's uh, the best of both worlds in my opinion. Um, obviously there are other opportunities out there, such as working for Woods Hole, um, working for NOAA, uh, working for even energy companies, uh, oil in oil remediation. So there are a lot of job opportunities out there. And it's really uh, a broad, our major is a really broad major. So it's designed for you to do really anything that you want in, in the environmental uh, and marine science spectrum. So I know a lot of my friends want to go into research. Um, some of us want to go into education and other, others want to go into more um, oil spill cleanup and remediation, and that's completely fine. Uh, Mass Maritime will prepare you for that. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or any of my other associates. I would be more than happy to answer questions. Thank you. My name is Heather Gaughan, and I'm from Situate, Massachusetts. I serve as one of the MSSEP training rates. Within the MSSEP program, cadets are expected to complete a three credit and a six credit co-op with the improved organization or company of their choosing. This is an opportunity to not only build your resume, but to also get hands-on real world experience. In the summer of 2019, I interned jointly for both the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, Buzzards Bay National Estuary Program, as well as the Buzzards Bay Coalition in their long-term salt marsh vegetation and elevation monitoring project in Buzzards Bay. I did in this project through data collection, data analysis, as well as equipment prep. Historically, many salt marsh areas in Buzzards Bay and elsewhere have been filled or otherwise adversely affected by human activities. More recently, the Buzzards Bay National Estuary Program and the Buzzards Bay Coalition have received numerous reports of rapid salt marsh loss around Buzzards Bay. The study principally involved documenting vegetation cover and canopy height, rack depth, crab and rib muscle burrow densities, and elevation at, sta at stations along permanent transects. I felt proud to have served as a summer intern for the Buzzards Bay National Estuary Program and the Buzzards Bay Coalition Long-Term Salt Marsh Vegetation and Elevation Monitoring Project. I actually contributed to legitimate scientific research at an undergraduate level. I went from knowing nothing about surveying, power tools, transects, and quadrats to feeling very comfortable with these topics. I now feel more comfortable completing fieldwork and working independently. 
I'm a, currently in no National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, Ernest F. Hollings Undergraduate Scholar. The Hollings Scholarship Program recognizes outstanding students in studying in NOAA mission fields. It provides successful undergraduate applicants with awards that include academic assistance for two years of full-time study and a 10-week full-time paid internship at a NOAA facility during the summer. The internship provides scholars with hands-on practical experience in NOAA-related science research, technology, policy, management, and education activities. Awards also include travel funds to attend a mandatory NOAA scholarship program orientation and the annual Science and Education Symposium, which is a scientific conference where students present their research. In the summer of 2020, I interned virtually with NOAA's Office of Education, working primarily with their education outreach team to develop new education resource collections. NOAA maintains online resource collections to help educators access um, educational materials about the ocean and atmosphere. These collections are the most popular pages on noaa.gov education, receiving 1.5 million yearly page views. However, as of July 2020, these collections did not include resources on bony fishes, shellfish, sharks, and related fishery sciences. I worked with NOAA's Office of Education to develop new online resource collections about fisheries and related sciences. I surveyed various fisheries educators, as well as educators from other NOAA line offices, to collect educational resources on fishery-related topics. I conducted gap analysis of the 47 survey submissions I received, including species covered in the resources, and whether or not those resources had a cultural component, such as history, fishing communities, traditional ecological knowledge, etc., in order to create the most informative collection. By the conclusion of my internship, I had written the narrative for and helped to develop a fisheries and seafood collection which is now on noaa.gov slash education's website. It is my plan to work to protect our oceans. More specifically, my goal, career goals are to graduate from Massachusetts Maritime Academy with high honors, to serve as an officer in the NOAA Commissioned Officer Corps, to attain in due course a master's degree with a focus in marine affairs and science communication, and to ultimately to make a career with the National Marine Fisheries Service, ideally while obtaining a doctorate along the way. I'm currently in the application process for the NOAA Commissioned Officer Corps. The NOAA Commissioned Officer Corps, or informally known as the NOAA Corps, is one of the eight federal uniformed services of the United States. The NOAA Corps' primary mission is to monitor oceanic conditions, support major waterways, and monitor atmospheric com conditions. The NOAA Corps provides a ready source of scientifically and technically skilled officers who can be incorporated into the U.S. Armed Forces in time of war, but in which in peacetime supports defense requirements in addition to its purely non-military scientific missions. I really connect with their motto of science, service, and stewardship, as the NOAA Corps incorporates both of my passions, ocean conservation and serving my country. I believe that Massachusetts Maritime Academy has really put me in the position to achieve all of my career goals. Thank you. How's it going, everyone? My name is Sam Jackson. I'm a senior at Massachusetts Maritime Academy. I'm one of the senior training rates for the MSSEP program. Um, I'm from Annapolis, Maryland, which is where I'm recording this video now. Obviously, the pandemic has changed a few things, but uh, still hopefully be able to give you a good idea of um, what you can do with the MSSEP major at Maritime and what the possibilities are afterwards. Tell you a little bit about what I've done with my co-ops and what I plan to do once I graduate. Um, so obviously there's the two co-ops you have to do before you graduate. There's your six credit one and your three credit one. Um, so I've done my six credit so far and uh, he'll have to do my three credit one. I'm gonna do that this winter before I graduate. And uh, for my six credit is actually pretty cool. Um, the uh, Panama Maritime University has a close working relationship with Mass Maritime and um, they do an exchange program. Uh, they send some of their uh, cadets up to our orientation program or two-week orientation and every winter we have some of the MSSEP students and business students go down to Panama for uh, about a month in the winter. Um, really cool uh, different perspective of how different countries manage their maritime resources and their um, marine resources specifically. Um, the school is based in Panama City, um, which is right there by the Panama Canal. Um, as I'm sure you all know, is a huge canal that goes right through the Isthmus of Panama and is you know pretty instrumental in affecting the world's trade and how cargo moves across the planet. Um, 
But the cool thing about the internship that we did down there is that you get to see how that canal uh, affects the ecology of that area, um, especially the you know, marine ecology. Um, the canal is a freshwater um, body, and so you know, obviously you have to take in consider into consideration what that um, uh, flow of fresh water uh, does was it, when it goes into, you know, on the one side of the Caribbean and on the other side of the Pacific. Learned about that. Um, learned about the fact that they pump a lot of water into the canal, which I did not know, um, and how that's affecting the, um, the population of Panama that depends on the, the central lake that feeds the canal, um, how that's taking drinking water away from them, uh, something I wasn't aware of. So you get to learn a lot about that. Um, you get to go on a couple field trips to see different, um, you know, environments within that general area. Do do one trip to the uh, Caribbean side. Get to see the you know the ecology of a tropical island in the Caribbean. Do a lot of work around the um, Pacific coast side. Do the same kind of thing over there. Um, learn about different species and you know how our actions, especially in that part of the world, are affecting the uh, ecosystem. Um, so that's a really cool um, internship. I very highly recommend it. Um, get to see a lot of different culture and, you know, spend a month in a country that you probably wouldn't otherwise. Um, so definitely a wonderful experience. Um, for this winter, um, I'm hoping to do a internship that, you know, somehow uh, works with this new online structure. Um, and <laughs> we'll figure that out. Um, but it's most likely going to be an online internship. So we'll see. Um, in terms of post-grad plans, um, I'm not entirely nailed down on what I want to do. Um, as I'm sure you guys have heard, uh, one of our other rates, Heather Gone, is going into the NOAA Corps, which I've kicked that around. They have a dive program in Florida where you're doing science diving, um, which seems pretty incredible, you know, doing three, four dives a day, collecting data. Um, considered being an environmental resource officer, either for the state of Maryland or a federal wildlife officer. Um, but the, the gist of what I want to do is to be in a position where I'm making a positive impact on the ecosystem through either management or law enforcement. And, you know, at the end of the day, I feel as though I'm helping to protect these resources and an ecosystem that I care very deeply about. Um, the MSSEP major is fantastic because it gives you the opportunity to pursue a lot of different avenues. You can do port safety, you can do you know, human health and risk, that kind of thing, um, workplace safety, or you can pursue, you know, marine biology, um, you know, enforcement, environmental law. So there's there's a whole wide array of things you can do um, with this major. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm still figuring out exactly what it is I want to do. Um, but like I said, at the end of the day, I want to feel as though I'm making a positive impact and uh, doing something I care about. So thanks for listening to uh, to my little spiel here. And uh, hopefully you guys got something out of it and uh, will consider attending Massachusetts Maritime Academy. Bill Hubbard, Mass Maritime Academy, Marine Science, Safety and Environmental Protection Department. <clears throat> this is our Aquaculture Marine Sciences Lab. And right now we're just gearing up after the summer was closed. We went out collected a few organisms, a couple small fish, some of our bigger fish aren't inbound yet, cleaning tanks. Uh, we have a variety of shellfish it's an aquaculture lab we have some local oysters some good cohogs the aquaculture class itself is going to run this winter this is a local sponge biona uh, the larger form of it it's, it's actually you know a sack of water it's, it's, it's this color naturally we've had this sponge now for a year and a half it just grows it does well in here this is all running seawater the tanks are, 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 are raw seawater without any actual uh, filtration so that the shellfish can feed. We have a pretty good lobster study going. We've been evaluating lobster shell disease. This is a very healthy lobster. Um, so we collect the lobsters, we evaluate them for the shell disease, and then we tag them and let them go. This one doesn't have a tag on it yet. So we could do population studies. These tanks are the students' tanks. We have students studying uh, local coral. The rest of the tanks right now are empty. Students are, are, are inbound, and we're going to have them uh, do some of the research. They can do their own research. And we have three major research projects here. 
One is Sea Scouts. So we were working with NOAA. It's one of the few labs that can keep sea scallops alive. They actually like cold water. And they like raw seawater. If you filter out the seawater coming into the lab, you're not feeding the sea scallops. So here are the sea scallops. They're, they're in what we call lantern nets. And we'll get you in closer with some flashlights and you could uh, get a better picture of them in a minute. But the sea scallop experiment with NOAA was highly successful. We'll keep that going. We're going to work on juvenile black sea bass. We'd like to try growth rates of them. And then, of course, the long-term ongoing lobster study. Those studies are organic to what we do, but every student can pick a tank, uh, do their own study. We, we do have some, actually, the sea bass study is theirs. And then we have a group of offshore and outside work, sampling on the dock, tagging fin fish and we work for Mass Department of Environmental Protection on the research boats, we go out and do underwater video mapping of the U.S. I'm Evie Gosselin. I'm from North Andover, Massachusetts, and I'm a freshman here at Mass Maritime Academy. I'm majoring in marine science safety and environmental protection, and I'm really excited to start working here um, in the aquaculture lab. We just got off the docks um, looking at some lobster traps, and you can measure the length of them. And we also found a lion's mane jellyfish in the water, which is really cool. We took a really cool video. So I'm really excited to be working here with Professor Hubbard in the office of the lab. Here you go. One of Mass Maritime's research vessels. There's a handful of them. This is the 22 footer. This is the 22 foot Mass Maritime Academy. Eel grass mapping. The camera was just put away. And we just put getting us tied up for the day. We go offshore and we map eelgrass for the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection. They look at the eelgrass across the state, and every five years they make us the entire coast, and they draw polygons in our GIS and say, well, you know, is it eelgrass? Is it, is it seaweed now? And they send us out with the water camera system.